Donald Sly Green out of Buffalo, New York. Sly Green started as a numbers runner and then a debt collector. He caught his first body at 14, where he spent a year in juvenile detention. Then at the age of 16, he caught an attempted armed bank robbery charge and was sentenced to 10 years in state prison after his release in 1984. Sly Green, with the age of his brothers, got into the cocaine business. His crew was known as the L.A. Boys because his cocaine plug was in, Lo in Los Angeles. Sly Green also was known as the Godfather, the Black Crime Boss, and the Black John Gotti of Buffalo. He was able to flood the streets with cheap cocaine he was getting from L.A. But his thirst for power wasn't quenched. He wanted to take over a powerful numbers racket, and with the aid of his top enforcer, Daryl Reese Johnson, who allegedly murdered Lionel Cartrell in 1988 during his takeover of Buffalo, Daryl Johnson allegedly killed eight people and attempted to kill 25 others. The L.A. boys controlled the illegal drug trade on Buffalo's east side because he had ties with other kingpins from several states and coasts. The law said that he consolidated the drug game, bringing them together and created the commission within the organization. They said he had 11 captains and three underbosses. The feds held him responsible for moving 100 keys a month for five years, from 1987 to 1992. The feds indicted him and 32 co-defendants, but put him at the top of the indictment. He was charged with a RICO. The RICO means racketeering and influence and corrupt organization. He was facing a death penalty, but they took the death penalty off the table, but he still had the control in the criminal organization charge, also known as the Super Kingpin Act. During his trial, his girlfriend, Doris Parker, testified he had more money than she ever seen in her life. Sly got angry in court because she was saying what they needed to make this super kingpin charge stick. So he jumped up and said, Your Honor, she's a lying bitch. Then another snitch starts lying on the stand. So he jumped up again, but this time he threw a water pitcher at him. Then he was strapped down like Hannibal Lecter and taken out the courtroom. And he was forced to watch his trial on video in a bullpen above the courthouse. March 1994, a jury found him guilty of racketeering and narcotics conspiracies, engaging in a con continuing criminal enterprise, and obstructing of justice. He was sentenced to he was sentenced in July 1994 and was sentenced to four concurrent life sentences, two concurrent 20-year sentences, a 10-year concurrent sentence, and a 15-year concurrent sentence. Damn. That's four life sentences plus 110 years. Damn. But his enforcer, John Reese Johnson, Daryl John Reese Johnson, was sentenced to eight life sentences, believed to be the harshest penalty ever given in a federal case in that district. During Sly's time in federal custody, he's been in Lewisburg, Leavenworth, Kansas, Colorado High Security, and the Atlanta Penitentiary. To fight his case, he has studied law for six years to learn the law. He teaches a law class in prison to help other inmates learn about the law. As a jailhouse lawyer, he has won 166 cases and five Supreme Court cases for other inmates. Daryl Sly Green is the author of Diary of a Jailhouse Lawyer by Tracy Green. And he is currently working on his second book. He encourages the youth not to follow in his footsteps. Get educated. Get a job. Be a contributing part of society. The streets will give you nothing but death or prison. Street Kingpin Hustlers does not glorify drug dealing or crime. All these stories end in death or prison. So if you're lucky and you don't get killed in this game, then you go to prison where you have no freedom, no privacy, the food is disgusting. Everyday inmates are fighting and stabbing and killing each other. And you are surrounded by murderers, rapists, and robbers. 
Remember, you can love the streets, but they don't love